You've probably already seen websites that have a really similar cursor hover effect to the iPad OS cursor hover and I started thinking a while ago, can we recreate this inside a framer? And well, the answer is yes. I created a code component that you can use really easily on your websites to recreate the same effect. So in this quick tutorial, that is what I'm going to show you how to use. My name is Nandi, this is Frame University and let's get started. So before we do anything, let me quickly clarify, this is a project that you can remix with the link in the description, so make sure to check that out. It's going to be like a link that you can click, it's free completely, so yeah, make sure to do that if you're interested. So let's first think about, or think, let's first talk about the fact that um, I came across this uh, personal website of Moritz Peterson and I was like, hmm. This effect looks really cool. And I was like, okay, so it, it means that we can actually bring this to the web because, you know, I also saw the iPad OS uh, like hover cursor when you like hook, hook your iPad up to like a touchpad or something and like, you have this like little cursor and whenever you hover over something like interactive, it just snaps onto it and it just looks really cool. Uh, and yeah, uh, shout out to Moritz for building this cool portfolio. The whole thing looks uh, pretty cool, by the way. So. If we move down here, you can see that I already recreated it. It's basically a super easy to use component. And let me just show you how you can set it up on your Framer website. The first thing that you have to do is you have to go here to the Framer.University website, to the resources section. You can simply search for iPad or hover. You can just copy um, or just go to the link in the description. You're gonna go to copy components. So now it's on your clipboard. All you have to do now is to jump into Frame project and paste it in there. So when you're in your Framer project, you can just simply press Command V and it's going to be pasted in somewhere on the canvas. As you can see, it got pasted within the text wrap. I can just copy and I'm going to paste it somewhere here on the on the canvas. You can see it's not even visible. It's like a small like component. It doesn't have any width or, or height. I can set 100, 100. But even if I do that, you're going to see that this is an invisible component. So it just adds the effect to your elements. And the way it works, I'm gonna delete this for now because I already have some of these set up. So for example, within the text wrap, I added this iPadOS cursor component and I placed it absolutely, I pinned it to all the sides and basically it has a fixed you know, size. So when you're using it in this mode, you're basically setting the size of the, of the hover effect when you hover over how large that little frame should be. As you can see, it's basically the same size that we had here. If I make it larger, you can see it's gonna be larger. So this is the first way of using it, but you can also just set the width and height to fit content. You can position it anywhere within this wrapper, this text wrap, which basically wraps the text. And now it will still work. However, as you can see, it will like strictly fit that parent frame that you're pasting it within. So yeah, if this works for you, if you can, if you just want to wrap uh, or sorry, fit the parent frame, in this case, the text wraps size, you can just set it to fit width and height. But if you want to specify something, you know, really specific, you can just set a, a custom size for it. And the highlight effect will nicely follow that as you can see. Uh, what you also see on this component is that it has a bunch of properties on the right panel. One of them is color, which is basically setting the default color that we see on here uh, by default on the canvas. As you can see in this case, it's like a little gray something. You you also have like a size, which is 19. This can be a little bit weird because like, you know, you have a multiple components, uh, you know, pasted in within like buttons and like different frames and stuff like basically anything that is interactive and you know if you have varying like sizes and base colors that will not really be great um because because yeah you can only have one base size and base color so what this component will basically do is it will always get like the first component uh, that is on the website and it will get the information from there but what you have to basically just pay attention to is to have consistent uh like size and, and color on this component 
to, to make sure that the base state looks like this. Uh, it's a little bit hard to say which one is the first, to be honest. I'm not even sure, but maybe the first in like the order. So as you can see, I'm going from top to bottom. Oops, this is the first one. If I change the size here, well, hopefully it's going to change. Yeah, as you can see, the base uh, shape got larger. Uh, even though we have some other component instances of the iPadOS with smaller size, it's not really going to care because this is the first one. This defines the base size and the base color. Uh, we have hover color and then pressed color. So for example, we are inspecting this one. If I change the hover color to red, then it's going to be red. Super simple, not too complicated. The pressed is basically what we see when we press down. So you can see it changes to a different color. And then we also have magnetism, which basically means how much of a magnetic effect it will get. If I take this up to like a large size, you can see that it is, it is a little bit too magnetic. Like it's just too sensitive in my opinion. I like using something like four. And then children, now if that's 0%, you can see that the children is not really moving. Let me just switch this back to something normal, by the way. Uh, maybe 999. You can see that if I hover over uh, now with children zero, the elements within the parent frame are not really moving. So, you know, I pasted the iPad OS within the logos and the logos holds the apple, the uh, little X in the center, and then framer on the right. So these elements will only be moving slightly if the children is set to a different percentage let's say 50 percent so you can see that with the magnetic effect we're not only moving this highlight frame but also the frames or the elements within if you set it to 100 they're gonna be moving uh, a lot so yeah basically that's that a radius it's basically the radius of this highlight effect um, and yeah then we have height cursor you can you should probably hide your regular cursor so when you're hovering um, over you know, different things you're not seeing your regular cursor uh, which might not be hidden in the recording so don't be confused oh my god by the way i just realized that maybe my screen recorder is, is not really showing this properly but but yeah um, maybe just preview this effect on the demo page of the that you find in the description because um, yeah, it shouldn't really show the default cursor. It should just show a little like circle. And yeah, basically that's all the properties that we should talk about. The Z index, it basically means that when it's set to max, this little highlight that appears, it's gonna be pasted over or placed over the elements within this parent frame. So you can see that it is moving above these um, like little logos. So yeah, that's basically it. One little quick tip for you, if you're using it, on, for example, on buttons and stuff like that, it, it, it actually is worth it, like placing it within the components, uh, because then it means that it's not only added to a single frame, but multiple frames or elements. So you can see we don't have it on uh, this left button and we're not having it on this right button because they are both the same component. So we can just go here, maybe we can copy this. Um, we can go within the component, we can paste the iPad OS cursor within. I'm gonna use it in fit mode because it's fine if it like, you know, has the size of the, of the button. And then I'm gonna have a little bit different color, maybe 25% and uh, maybe 20 or maybe 30% on press. And, um, and that's basically it. And we can take a quick look at how this works. Yeah, it looks really nice. And since it's a component, it will work on this and this version as well. Maybe here we could have like gray. So on the gray variant, we could just override this iPadOS um, cursor's hover color to something like gray. And then also the rest color to this gray. So now it's probably gonna be solved. Uh, yeah, and it looks really nice. So yeah, I really do hope that this quick little run through this little tutorial of the iPadOS cursor is helpful and maybe you can create a cool little website with it. If you have any questions about it, make sure to drop them in the comments. And yeah, again, feel free to remix it. Uh, the link will be in the description. You can also find the link for Framing.University, by the way, that not only has this component, but a bunch of other components that you can use like just copy and paste into your framework project and um, yeah, it, it will just take your size to the next level. Also, there are a bunch of other like 
you know, scroll animations, tutorials. It's just a great resource if you're a learning framer or you're building sites with framers. So yeah, make sure to check that out. And that's it uh, from me for today. Make sure to like this video, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.